。今天是七月八号，今天这个啊，白鸟艾希德参加这个美国奥运会金牌得主 Josh Davis。他来这边做讲习会，所以我们参加他的讲习会。旁边坐着两个就不让人安心。他跟 Michael Phelps 是同一队的，他是 Michael Phelps 的队长。So I hope you pay close attention to all the information I'm going to give you today for the next couple of hours. Now, the Mutual Omaha Breakout Swim Clinic travels all over the country. And in fact, we've been for the last seven years we've been averaging 80 cities a year, so it's over 500 cities we've been to now. And it's great to be in one of the best places in the world, Herndon, Virginia. My <laughs> God, I love being next to DC. I love this part of the country. I love the history here. I love what. What all this stands for, how we live in the greatest country in the world, and a lot of it started right here. So this is really cool to be here. Now, who here has been to a breakout swim clinic before? Okay, good, good, good. Who has no idea who I am at all? Okay, that's good. <laughs> that is perfect. You haven't heard my jokes yet. This is good. Now, uh, but um, but me and 30 different Olympic swimmers, we travel around the country teaching groups like this. And so I'm really glad to be back in this area. Now, has anybody ever been to Omaha, Nebraska? Okay, you're not missing that much. But no, <laughs> Omaha is cool for two reasons. <laughs> Omaha is cool because that is where the Olympic trials are. Did you watch the Olympic Games in London last yes, year? Yes. You remember it? Yeah. Michael Phelps winning his 18th gold medal. Are you kidding me? To become the greatest Olympian of all time. And you see Ryan Lochte do pretty good, and we love Missy Franklin. So guys, we all loved it. One month before the London Olympics was the Olympic trials. The top thousand swimmers in America come together to pick the top 50. 25 guys, 25 girls get picked from the Olympic trials to go represent our country at the Olympic Games. The Olympic trials is one of the most amazing swim meets you will ever see. And it's in Omaha, Nebraska. What they do is they put a 50-meter pool. It's three times as big as this. It's a 50-meter pool, and they put it on the basketball court of the huge basketball arena. Imagine a million gallons of water on the basketball court. 15,000 screaming fans, jumbotron, lasers. Every time Ryan or Michael or Missy breaks a record, fireworks go off in the building. It's amazing. It's eight days in a row. It's like a rock concert and a swim meet all put together for eight days in a row. It's unbelievable. Here's the other cool thing. I host a swim practice every morning with my Olympic friends who aren't racing in the meet. If you want to have the vacation of a lifetime, in three years from now, this day, this very day, is the Olympic trials in Omaha, Nebraska. And if you want to come watch the Olympians make. The next Olympics. You should be in Omaha. Now, does anybody know where the next Olympic Games is going to be? Rio. Start saving up for Rio. But if you can't go to Rio, you can all go to Omaha, Nebraska. And watch the Olympic trials. I will be there. So, guys, Omaha is cool for a second reason. That's where a great company is from, called Mutual of Omaha. Would everybody say that together? Mutual of Omaha. That has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? They're a great company because they, they they love you guys and they want you to be your best because they understand something very important. They understand that swimmers are the coolest people on the planet. Let's hear it for swimmers! Woo! That's why I'm so excited to be around you guys because you're my swimmer, fellow swimmer people. We're like a big family. See, us swimmers have a special bond. We have a special bond to swimmers, not just because we smell like chlorine. But there's four reasons why it's great to be a swimmer that bond us together. The first reason why it's great to be a swimmer is that you're tougher than all the other sports. Now think about it. When I was 14, I started training twice a day, an hour and a half before school, an hour and a half after school. I did that schedule for 10 more years year round. I don't know any other sport that has that kind of schedule. 
Swimmers are tough. And the second thing, why it's great to be a swimmer, because of your work ethic and your time management. We need to do better in school. We have good GPAs. So the second reason is we're smarter than the other sports. So good job. Keep up those A's. Did you guys know it's possible to turn off the TV and read a book in the summertime? Yes. No, it's actually physically possible. Right, parents? It is true. And the third reason why it's great to be a swimmer. I don't know why this is, but it's true. We're much better looking than the other sports. <laughs> Congratulations, you're good looking people. And the fourth reason why it's great to be a swimmer. We're cleaner than all the other sports. Have you ever smelled a hockey locker room? It's way better. Well, a swimming locker room is way better than a hockey locker room. Guys, I actually have set the record. I went 50 days one summer with the same swimsuit, no bath. You don't have to do that. Please take a bath. The point I'm trying to make, you do not have to do that. But we're clean, we're good looking, and we're smart, and we're tough, and I'm proud of you. So thank you for committing yourself to a great sport like swimming. Swimming's been really good to me. I got to swim for my high school team, my college team. And then I got to go to two Olympic teams. I traveled the world with the USA team for over 10 years. And guys, swimming's been so good to me. But there was a time in my life where I wasn't always an Olympian. I'm sure you can believe that. I was a little, little youngster just like you one time. But guys, can you believe this? I wasn't always a swimmer. Can anybody guess? Now here's the shocking news. I didn't start swimming until I was... 12 years old. Anybody here 12 or younger, please raise your hands. Woo! You guys are awesome. You're where I would. Now, guys, real quick, who can guess the first sport I did when I was five years old? Starts with letter B. Baseball. It was not basketball. Baseball. And it was not baseball. Bowling. Volleyball. And it wasn't bowling. Good guess. Volleyball. There's no such thing as volleyball. volleyball. Oh. volleyball. <laughs> and it wasn't volleyball. And it wasn't badminton. Boxing. And it wasn't boxing. And it wasn't biking. And it wasn't boating. And it wasn't. Jump, and it wasn't bungee jumping, it wasn't bull riding. That's right. The first sport my mom signed me up for when I was five years old was ballet. That's right. You got it. What's your name? Jackson. Jackson, got it. I don't know why that, my mom did that to me. I was the only guy in a class of 40 girls. I cannot appreciate that ratio at five. I just went out there real bad. But I, I'm glad I did ballet. I'm glad I did all the sports. I went on to try many sports. Raise your hand if you ever did soccer. I love soccer. I love soccer so much. That was my first love. That was my first big sport was soccer. Then I did baseball. Anybody love baseball? I love baseball. I played first base for a long time. Then I did basketball. I love basketball. And then I did tennis. And then, and then I tried gymnastics. Who loves gymnastics? I love gymnastics. And guys, I'm really proud to say I can still do a handstand to this day. Would you like to see me do a handstand? Yeah. You're like, do it! All right. now. now, I'm going to attempt to do a handstand. Now, I'm going to attempt a record. I don't think anybody's ever done a handstand on this pool deck. Like this, ever. So what I'm going to do is going to be a cool record. But I need your help. When my hands hit the ground, you start counting. One, two, and when I fall over, you stop counting. That's the record. Okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Am I ready? Yeah. I just turned 40. Last time I did gymnastics, I was 12. That's 28 years ago. Okay, are you nervous? No! No! no. no. Okay, new pool record. I need your help. When my hands are grabbing, you start counting. Let's see if I can still do it. Hands stand. Here we go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So guys, I am proud of all the sports I did. And then when I was 12 years old after gymnastics, I tried to hold you. Guess what it was? Swimming! Guys, 
I joined a neighborhood team much like this one. And I fell in love with swimming. I fell in love with the water. I fell in love with my friends and the swim team. I fell in love with racing and ribbons. And that first summer, that first summer at my summer league neighborhood team, I got lots of yellow and white ribbons. You know, those third and fourth place, they're okay. But guess which ribbons I really liked? The blue ones, they're so pretty. Blue's my favorite color, I love the blue ribbons. And guys, you know what? I was doing a little research. I was watching everybody that was getting the blue ribbons. And the smart guy that I was, I finally realized, wow, they were on the all-year team. You know when you do year-round swimming, you do summer league, you get lots of blue ribbons. That, that's what I got to do. So at 13 years old, in eighth grade, I sign up for the big all-year team. I go to the big pool, the big coach, the big team, and I try out. And the coach was shaking his head, looking at me. You see, my freestyle backstroke were okay, but my butterfly was horrible. And my breaststroke was not legal yet. Anybody have a hard time with that breaststroke? I know what that feels like. I will fix you. Bring my breaststroke. Now, guys, the coach was looking at me, shaking his head, and he pulled me out. And after that first practice on the big team at 13 years old, this is what he told me. Son, you're not very good. You should switch sports, because you'll never make it as a swimmer. Isn't that kind of a negative thing to say? Now guys, I was faced with a choice. At 13 years old, I was faced with a choice. I could listen to that negative attitude or I could focus on a positive one. I could focus on the negative or I could choose the positive. Guess which one I chose? I chose the positive. And I made a commitment to myself that day. I went home and I told myself that I was going to choose the positive no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the obstacle, no matter what anybody said, I was always going to choose the positive, and it changed my life. Yay! Second thing I did, I went home, and I wrote a goal on a piece of paper. Guys, nothing mystical or magical happens when you write a goal on a piece of paper. It's a very powerful mental exercise to write something down, to look at it every day, to know where you're going, and know what it's going to take to get there. And the last... 15 years of being with the USA team, of all the thousands of Olympians I've met and been on the team with, we all have one thing in common. Missy, Mike, all of them. We all have one thing in common. We all wrote our goals down when we were young, and we put it where we could see it, and we looked at it every day. And that day, when I was 13 years old, I put my goal on my notebook, I put it on my nightstand, I put it on my mirror, and I looked at it every day. And it changed my life. I have a challenge. For every person within the sound of my voice, single parents, here it is. I would like you to write a one-sentence goal for your life. I don't care what it is, school, sports, anything. I would like you to just write one sentence and put it where you're going to see it so you know where you're going and what's going to take you to get there. Can you all, I know it's summer, but can you all just promise me you'll write one sentence before the light goes out tonight? Can you do that? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It will change your life. So guys, I stayed positive. I set my goals. And the third thing I did, instead of switching sports, I switched coaches and everything was fine after that. Now, you don't have to switch coaches. You've got good coaches. But the moral of the story is it's amazing what happens when you get a great coach. A great coach does three things. They believe in you, they cheer you on and encourage you, and they give you truth of how you can be the best you can be. I'm going to be your coach for the next two and a half hours, and I'm going to cheer you on, I'm going to believe in you, and I'm going to give you skills, information, and knowledge. I'm going to give you truth of how you can reach your potential. So I am here for you, and hopefully you'll get something out of it. And this is what I did. I began to listen to my coach, and I worked very, very hard. And I realized that it takes two things to be great. One, a willingness to listen, and two, a willingness to work very, very, very hard. Here's the good news. All you have to do today is listen. I'm not going to work you out hard. We're just doing 25s. Is that okay? Yeah. Tomorrow is the hard work. Today is just fun. You just listen today. Now, guys, so I listened to my coach. And I got my breaststroke legal. Yay! In high school, I got my breaststroke legal, and after one year of training, I became one of the fastest on my team. 
At 15, after two years of training, I was the fastest in the city. At three years, at 16 years old, I was the fastest in the whole state. And finally, my senior year, after four years of full training, I was the fastest in the country. Now, when you're the best around, you get something really cool. It's called scholarship. Everybody say scholarship. That's your parents' favorite word. No pressure, just have fun. But guys, I was so blessed to get a full scholarship to any college in the United States. Where would you go if you could go to any university for free for four years? Where would you go? Well, I made the best decision. I went to the University of Texas. Hey, that's awesome. Okay. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm from Texas. UT, what we call it, UT, University of Texas, has a great sports team. In fact, the Olympic coach, Eddie Reese, is the coach there. Now, what are some of your favorite colleges from around here? What do you like? Stanford. No, oh, that's good. And what do you like? George Mason, they have a good team. What do you like? Virginia Tech, v Tech's got a great team. UVA, who likes UV? UVA. What do you like? Any others? Do you like one? Awesome. Just go somewhere, okay? Help your parents out. Just go somewhere. Take care of them when they're old. Now, guys, I had a blast going to college, and then I was finally ready for the greatest sporting event on the planet. It happens once every four years. Guess what it is? The Olympics! I made the Olympics, finally. I was 23 years old, and after 10 years, I started when I was 13, I was finally 23. That was 10 years of training. I made the Olympics, and guys, it is so fun to be an Olympian because you get lots of free stuff. <laughs> Do you like free stuff? Yeah! Then you all need to become Olympians. Yeah. Now guys, they give you free clothes. They give you free video games. They even have a free movie theater with free movies. Yeah! And the best part. In the Olympic Village, where we live for the whole month of the Olympics, they have five McDonald's restaurants, and it's free all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're going to think I'm crazy. The whole month I was at the Olympic Games, I didn't have one nugget, one french fry, one burger, one shake, one Coke the whole time I was there. You think I'm crazy, don't you? Yeah. yeah. No, you need to keep them shaking. Those of you, well, you might ask me. You know that McDonald's tastes really, really good, but it doesn't make you sort of really, really fast. So I didn't eat the McDonald's for my races. Then you say, well, Mr. Josh, why didn't you eat the McDonald's when you were done racing? You eat whatever you want. And this is what happened to me. See, guys, I committed for four years to get ready for those Olympic Games. And I didn't have, get this, for a whole year, a year before the Olympics, I gave up all candies, cakes, Cokes, cookies, ice cream. <laughs> I gave up everything that was bad. All fried food, all sauces. I All I ate was fruits and vegetables and Stop oats. It. I felt like a horse. <laughs> and guys, it worked. I did good. And, and then after the Olympics, I was done. I could eat whatever I want. And the closest thing was the main cafeteria. It was not the McDonald's, so I went straight to the cafeteria. And this is what I had for my first dinner after my race. I had a huge chocolate chip. <laughs> so good. And then, and then I had a huge piece of chocolate cake. It's even better. And then I had a huge piece of cheesecake. It's awesome. And then for dessert, I had a huge Klondike ice cream bar. My mouth was so happy, but my belly, not so much. <laughs> I felt so gross. I went back to eating like a horse, and I never went to McDonald's. So that's my story. But guys, I wasn't there to eat the free food or meet all those wonderful people. I was there to race for the greatest country in the world. And guys, are medals free? No. Those have to be earned. You got to line up behind the blocks, and you got to race against the best athletes in the world, and you see who's the very best. And I was a little nervous, i got to be honest with you. Anybody get nervous before a race? Yeah. Even us Olympians get nervous. It's normal. You just got to channel that energy, stay positive. And who loves relays? Yeah! I love relays. You get that extra boost of adrenaline because you're working as a team. And I'm the leadoff guy. My job as a leadoff guy is to get a lead. And the job of the next three guys is not to mess it up. So I got a lead. 
and the guys held the lead the whole way. And we won at the Olympic Games. And what do you get when you win? Yeah. What color is it? Gold! Hey guys, I brought all my gold medals to show you today. I don't, it is real 22 karat gold. I don't know if you've ever seen one up close, but you all are going to wear these three gold medals at the end of the program at 4.30. All of you are going to get to wear all three of my gold medals. It's going to make a great Facebook photo. But guys, when they put that medal around my neck, and I looked at that beautiful flag, and I sang that beautiful anthem, I realized just how blessed I was to grow up in the best country in the world. Do you guys know that you live in the best country in the world? Yeah! yeah. Do you know it's okay to be the best? Yeah! yeah. Somebody's got to do it. Might as well be us, right? <laughs> Seriously, do you know why we're the best? Because we have freedom! Everybody say freedom! Freedom! You're free to go to school, you're free to have a pool, you're free to have parents who do everything for you. So guys, it is so great to be an American. And it's so great to know that I had the opportunity to train hard and to be my best. In fact, I could be the best in the world. Guys, isn't that a crazy thought, being the best in the world? Hey, let me ask you a quick question. Do you think when you grow up, 10 years from now, you could be the best in the world at whatever you're going to do? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> okay, I see the look in your eyes. Some of you are like, oh yeah, I can do that. And then some of you are like, uh, dude, that's really hard. Uh, guys, if you would have told me when I was 12 years old that I would grow up and get a gold medal and be one of the best swimmers in the world, I would have had the same look in my eye too, saying, I don't know, man. I'm just a little old guy from Texas. I don't know if that'll happen to me. But guys, I was wrong. Dreams do come true. Hard work does pay off. Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> Hard work does pay off. That's the kind of country we live in. That's the kind of sport swimming is. So, guys, that was a tremendous moment when I got that gold medal. But I don't know if you can believe this, but it got even better. Because after that anthem, we parade around the pool deck and we wave to all the people in the stands. There's about 15,000 people in the stands that night, and we're waving to all of them. It's really fun. They're waving at me. I'm waving back. I don't know who they are, but it's really fun. But then all of a sudden, I look up in the stands, way up high, and for the first time in many weeks, because of our strict training, I caught eyes with my mom and my dad for the first time. This was a special moment because I hadn't seen them in many weeks, and they had been through that whole 10-year journey with me, and I'll never forget looking at them for the first time. They're laughing and crying uncontrollably as they just watched their son win a gold medal for the whole world. And I'll never forget that moment when I looked eyes with my mom, and we both thought of all those mornings at 5.30 a.m. that my mom would come to my room. And she, I can remember like it was yesterday. She'd sit on my bed and she'd scratch my back and say, Son, it's time to practice. I have your smoothie downstairs waiting for you. I'll drive you to practice when you're ready. Now, she wasn't always that nice. But I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to my mom who fed and cared for me and cheered me on all those years. And I looked at my dad and my dad's my hero. And I knew I'd made him proud. When I finally ran up to the steps to see my mom and my dad, they, they squeezed me real tight and they started yelling something like this. That was awesome! <laughs> Can't believe how fast you swam. We're so proud of you. We love you. And they kept saying that over and over. We're so proud of you. We love you. We're so proud of you. We love you. And guys, I got to tell you, when they said those words, that was the best moment of the whole Olympic Games. Better than winning the medal. Better than breaking the record, even better than hearing that beautiful anthem, was hearing those words from my mom and my dad, I'm so proud of you, I love you. Guys, the reason I share with you that part of my journey is because I spent 10 years training 5 hours a day to get this gold medal. And in those 10 years, I learned a valuable lesson. I learned that unconditional love is the most powerful force in the universe. You see, my parents' unconditional love for a 12-year-old kid allowed me to try out for a sport I wasn't very good at. And I could try, and I could fail, but I could get back up and keep trying because I knew I was loved. My parents didn't care what my time or place was. They just loved watching me swim my best. And their love helped me get through a lot of tough years. 
And sure enough, their love was the greatest reward when the journey was done. Knowing that I'm unconditionally loved has been the greatest truth I've ever known and the greatest gift my parents ever gave me. Moms and dads, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for loving on your kids, for feeding them, for driving them, and paying for everything. And you have no idea how much laundry they do. They don't do it because they like it. They do it because they love you. Athletes, can we give our moms and dads a big round of applause? Thank you every day. Thank you, mom and dad. Um, it's exactly a year ago this Friday. I lost my mom to cancer, and I miss her very, very much. I miss her cheering me on. I miss her watching me race. I miss her magic pancakes she used to make for me on race day that had oatmeal and blueberries in it so I go extra fast. But you know what, guys? As much as I miss her, I don't have any regrets. She knew I loved her, and I knew she loved me. And I am so glad. I made good grades because it made her so proud of me. I'm so glad I made my bed so she didn't have to. I'm so glad I raced my hardest every meet because she loved watching me do my best. I miss her very much, but I have no regrets. Guys, it's a special time in your life where you have your parents doing everything for you, cheering you and loving you like they do. Don't waste it. Make the most of it. But you look back and you say, I have no regrets. I did it right made them proud. That's the best way to go through life. You know you're loved. You can get through anything. And that's what I learned in my Olympic journey. <clears throat> the single most important thing to life and swimming is this. You're loved. You are loved. I just got to know you and I love you. And your parents, they definitely love you. And your coaches, they love you most of the time. No, they love you all. And God loves you. Please don't ever forget that. That's the most important thing to life and swimming. You will be quizzed on this later. I hope you're paying attention. Now, the second most important thing to life and swimming is something called the streamline. Yeah. Have you ever heard that word before? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about the next two hours. All right, we're about to get in the water. But I have one last story. I was so pumped up winning my three gold medals. I got two more gold medals that week. I have a total of three. I brought all three to, for you to wear at the end of the program for our Facebook photo. I swam for four more years. I got even faster. I trained even harder. And I went down to Australia, where they talk like this. And they have koala bears and kangaroos, and they love swimming. And they hosted the Olympics. And I had to race a guy named Ian Thorpe. Now, Ian Thorpe has size 17 feet. Now, that's like wearing flippers. That's cheating. You should be disqualified. You shouldn't have to race a guy like that. And Ian touched me out, and I got second place at the Olympic Games. I got the silver medal. Now, guys, second in the world ain't so bad. But isn't the gold medal prettier? Yes. I love my gold medals. But guys, I gotta tell you, this silver medal is my favorite medal of my whole life. Oh. Isn't that interesting? Of all the thousands of trophies and ribbons I've ever won, this beat up second place one is my favorite. Let me tell you why. At 28 years old, oldest guy on the USA team, this is when I did the fastest of my life. This is when I broke the American record. This is when I did my best! This is my favorite medal. What's more important, the color of the medal, or this is your best? I said the color of the medal. <laughs> that you did your best is the right answer. Please don't ever forget what makes you a champion is that you always do your best. I know you like the blue ribbon. I know you like the gold. But what makes you a champion is that you always do your best. And that's all I want from you today is your very best. I want you to listen as best you can. I want you to watch me do the strokes as best you can. I want you to try the drills and the strokes as best you can. And when I think you're ready, oh boy, I'm going to race you. <laughs> yeah! And all I want is your very best. Now please don't freak out. 
I will give you a nice big head start. But if you don't have a perfect streamline, you're dead meat. Now, we are going to race a 25 of each stroke. So who, who loves freestyle? Where's my... You get to race one of each stroke. So raise your hand if you like freestyle. You're really a freestyle lover, like me. Okay, I'll race you freestyle people. Now, where's my extra cool backstroke friends? Who loves backstroke? Okay, I'll probably race you a 25 backstroke. I would like that. You might have backstroke flies by then. And who? Who's my, my tough butterfly friends? Oh, wow. You guys are tough. I will be happy to race you in a 25 butterfly. Now, where's my... Special breaststroke friends. A little different, but special, yes. We appreciate breaststrokers. We need them for the medley relay. Now, <laughs> just teasing, I love breaststrokers. Just a little different, though. But no, I will race you breaststroke. So, guys, we're going to teach freestyle, race freestyle. Teach backstroke, race backstroke. Teach butterfly, race butterfly. Teach breaststroke, race butterfly. And then we're ready for the championships tomorrow. Who's racing tomorrow on the big meet? Okay, yeah. Who's Brandon, actually, you some other meets? Oh my goodness. You got racing, bro. Awesome. Brandon? Okay. So we're gonna be racing, we're gonna be doing our stuff in the pool for the next two hours. So you need to make sure you're hydrated, sunscreened, and um, I'm trying to think. Moms, do you think we should take a quick group picture now? Just look in front of the pool real quick.